So Luke and Matt, Hello. fantastic to meet you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, hey, you guys, is really chuffed to uh, have this opportunity to chat to you. I've got to say, I watched the documentary last week and wasn't really expecting much, didn't read anything about it. Came away, and I, I mean this genuinely, it was one of the most fun experiences that I've had since I've been reviewing films. It's been oh, 20 wow. years. I, gen I genuinely was, I was touched. Some of it was so funny. It was just, it was great fun to watch. So I wanted oh, to share that you. with you. That's, that's um, very generous, thank you. When did you first see it, and how did you feel about it after first seeing it? What was your immediate reaction? First saw it in Los Angeles, um, private screen in LA, and it was just, uh, it, it was same, it was just very jarring, very emotional. It was, uh, I guess it wasn't funny to us at, time, at times because we don't know if we're funny or not, but <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, it was very emotional and uh, uncomfortable, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. like sometimes watching yourself fight with the person that you love and some of the things he said about me and, uh, and, I get, and like I get, yeah, but from my perspective I gave him a look yeah. and he would give me a shrug of the shoulder and I'm just like, so it was just uncomfortable but I knew that it was, you know, dare I say, I knew that it was a really good film. I could feel like, wow, I've been physically affected by this film and ironically we're watching ourselves on the screen so it was very humbling and very kind of grateful grateful experience for me it was uh, the same the same deal extremely uncomfortable but it was in a weird way i was like well this is kind of cool because we were looking like i said we were looking at each other like well that was then and we've we we have come a long 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 way have probably the best friendship and rapport that we've had since be certainly before we were known uh so it's like you know what this is bloody uncomfortable at the times but as I've been saying in these interviews recently, it's like it was like getting therapy with a wooden bat, and uh, two two pig-headed South London boys. You might you might need that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I, I was yeah. I was wondering. Uh, you know, very few people get to have that mirror held up. Mm -hmm. How does that af affect you? And does it change you in any kind of? Has it changed your relationship at all? Absolutely, I'd say. Wouldn't you? Yeah, I think I think that we are so uh, annoyingly private. Um, Again, to our detriment, I think we've said no to s too many things, and you know, I have a tattoo that now says simply says yes, because I just want to say yes more, and I want to uh, travel more, and outside of music and outside of the shows that I do and the movie movies Luke make, I just I just want to have m more Not moments. Not travel. Yeah, I just want to go on holiday. I want to just. You know, have a few tequilas with my brother, and just I just want to have some of those moments as well, which I think in turn will help our creative process. Um, that all comes with a rebuilding of trust for each other. I think, to be honest with you, as well, I agree entirely, actually. But uh, but also, you know, and I'm not I don't want to put a down on, it, but there, there's been some ups and downs, say from our, our own country. We had to get away and. We, we're creative people and I think the responsibility to with any artist and now after 30 years of doing that and what creating various things the responsibility is exactly that and when it's hindered by answering questions that are actually frankly stale um, which we've got past um, it, it was uh, it's, been, it's been a challenge so thankfully not a casualty uh, and not certainly something a band-aid would fix but who would have thought making a movie and relinquishing all the parameters of censorship was profoundly impacting on me and I feel closer to Matt, we communicate better. If we have an argument now, it lasts seconds and we're so busy preserving the love that we have now. We, I think for me it illuminated a bloody waste of time arguing is when we should be putting that energy into each other's, the love for each other. You know? Do you think, I mean clearly you've learned from your experiences, do you think the music industry has learned from the way it treated you, from what you went through? I actually think yes, if, what do you think? That's the first time I've been asked that question, I actually think yes. I was, I was thinking about the likes of Take That and E17, the other boy bands that came in the years afterwards, they couldn't have sustained those bands with the way that the press treated you and what, how you were kind of chewed up towards the end of it. Well first of all, thank you for that. Thank you for That's that question. quite a relief hearing that, you know. Thank you for that question. <laughs> yeah. I think that, that, that we were imprisoned by the press in many ways. Not be, It wasn't the press's fault. The way it worked back then is there was a headline 
the public would read that headline and then we would have to wait for the next interview to rectify that headline. Mm -hmm. So it was a ladling effect of headline, 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 correcting, correcting, correcting. Now there's social media, you can go immediately. And that's going to come across as defensive, isn't and it? You, yeah, and you can, yeah, so you're defending yourself and that's not our personalities. So back then it was just an exhausting process where now there is a uh, a transparency between an artist and a journalist now so the journalist doesn't um, uh, report, the two report uh, honestly and and correctly um, then we can rectify that in, in two seconds yeah. back then you would be holden and imprisoned imprisoned by headlines and therefore your whole life is represented by sound bites now uh, I think we're actually enjoying being Matt and Luke and walking around this country we have been treated so beautifully by the public of this country for so many years mm -hmm. now um, we've lost a lot of our family um, and, and loss and the grieving of that is has been a journey but that's also been public but the public have been incredibly caring and we feel like we Britain is our extended family do you want it to continue? Do you want this to continue, the Bross thing, to go on, or did you feel as though you've, you've, that was the big moment you've built up, you've had your comeback, and, and you've met your fans again? Do you, have, you, have you got a taste for more? Absolutely. Well, we, we, we always realised once we were going to open this again, this is it, this forever, there is no breaking up, the band is back. What we, what we have decided to do, what with the, the life of the movie, and then time to let it digest and to, to sit and settle, we've realised that we want to spend a year festivals, our own shows, the round the world, globally, play, 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 and then take that gorgeous, vibrant energy into the recording studio, and what we've said is probably make the most, uh, you know, most uh, authentic Bross album ever made, so absolutely this is here to stay. I want to say as well, like, because it's, I, it's hard for me not to do this, because Luke has the luxury of talking about movies as a very different medium. I've, I've been, been on stage for 30 years, 150 shows this year, I get to see, as soon as I get back to Vegas, I'm back on stage. I played at Royal Albert Hall many times, the Palladium, I went back to Wembley, won best show of the year at Wembley as a solo artist in 2016. <laughs> so I, I really have managed to have an incredible connection musically. Um, it doesn't compare really in many ways to being on stage with my brother, but I don't want to lose those memories and, be, and have those, those moments dissolve into Bross either because I think in some ways, me staying in mu music has kept the, the, a certain engagement with the fans for Bros. I mean, I really have to say that because it's it's been one hell of a graft as well, doing you know, three and a half thousand plus shows just in Vegas alone. Vegas so. is the same when I'm promoting 60 movies yeah. now. I, I, I have a, an equal engagement, but it's yeah. it's uh, just different. I think that's what makes the, di the diverse careers, that's what makes it interesting. Just, just to your point that, that the this isn't a sudden suddenly we've met our fans like we've we've had a sure. great relationship with them over three decades is my yeah, point yeah. Yeah. i was looking up your vegas stuff and i was cause my question was going to be about after uh bros split did you did you have a hard time singing the songs would you sing them in the shower or would there be too much baggage with them i noticed in your show <laughs> like because you know that, I, you know I, personally i, I I'd, I'd be like oh, that stuff would do my head in but you you sang the songs many times let over me, the let years me still. Say to you very briefly as a musician if you have an, a record that is number one in 30 countries, you would be a fool not to sing it. Yeah. And when I've reinvented those, Luke, my brother enjoys my swing, my swing soul versions of all those songs, which I do in Vegas. And to have a big band, I just played with the BBC big bands, 50,000 people at BBC Proms in the Park. And I love singing those songs. A hit is a very, very difficult thing to come by. And to have them as the, as part of my arsenal and part of Luke's arsenal, it's it's a, it's a, it's a it's a it's a, an incredible thing to know that you can go, you can stop singing at the chorus, and every single one of that crowd will sing that chorus back at you. It's a powerful tool. It's a responsibility too, and I'm sure you've been to many, many, many shows where you want to hear the hits. You, do, you don't want them to skirt over them. I mean, of course, every artist wants to express himself, but that Matt says, you know. You want to hear that response in the audience where you can literally do that, but then you don't doubt. they want to hear it too. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I really want to ask you, Matt, about your show, I, I looked up your set list to see what you were singing, and I saw Hotel California in that list. Is that yeah. true? It's one of my all-time favourite songs. Yeah, I do a swing, 
No. Ska. I do a swing ska version of... Amazing. Swing big band ska version of Hotel California. And Don Henley's daughter came in and actually said it was her second favourite version. I mean, it's a very, very hard-hitting version. It's a song about the music industry. Yes, it is. So I, I, I'm like, was that an extra... Well, ironically, the director of entertainment actually said to me, oh, you can't do this to This Is Americana, you can't change it. And it's the, in, ten, in June, it'll be 10 years. And that's still the song that just never gets yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, hey You Guys.